Welcome to Excellent Adventures, where I, your host, Reese Sweeney, take a step away from my duties as a radio and TV personality and give you a first-hand look at my other love, backyard chickens and homesteading. Take a listen to conversations I have with others who are in farming, homesteading, and connected brands. And some of those conversations go a little like this. She does say I have too much, though. So. She says I have too many, but I don't think I have enough. The chicken math started mathing. Yep, yep, it's never ending. I only started with like four laying hens. Now I have over 100 chickens and geese and quail. So the first question we ask everybody that comes on to the Excellent Adventures, what was your old cluck moment? The first thing that comes to mind is when the first time I got locked inside one of my own chicken coops. We talk about the highs, the lows, and everything in between. Now let's see who's on this episode of Excellent Adventures. Hey man, we're back at it with another Excellent Adventures podcast live from Media Campus West. Reese right here, and of course it's powered by Blackyard Chickens. Listen, we have chicken royalty in the building right now this lady right here sets the internet on fire i'm so inspired by her garden i love the way she treats her chicken babies her and her husband have some amazing things going on in the nonprofit space but listen she made a video last year that everybody copied and i still watch it <laughs> this is the egg dealer herself she is in the building naya matthews twin oh fall let me hit that hype bell going listen it is so, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. I saw, I was like, wait a minute. This is a black chicken man. Oh, I love you, Mandel. I follow your chickens, your journey. You are absolutely doing things that are phenomenal. Thank you so much. Well, you are too. I'm, I'm going to sit here and sing your praises for a few minutes. So we first, a lot of people first kind of got to know you, your husband, your farm, what you're doing with the uh, video you guys had acting like, you know, the eggs was was like, we, we selling something else. You know what I mean? Y'all was in there whipping the eggs like, no money. You know what I mean? We just going to say it. But uh, it, it was a time where, you know, the egg prices are going up. A lot of people were kind of getting into backyard chickens and farming, but you have been doing it. You guys got this amazing garden. You, you really care for these animals and you know what chicken math is. So we're going to get into it. But the first question we ask everybody coming out to the show, the first question we ask is, what was your old cluck moment? What was that moment that you knew? Oh, I'm a chicken woman. Now I'm a chicken mama now. When I start naming them. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? <laughs> when I start naming them, start treating them like my, my children. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I fell in love with their personality. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, and chicken math is real. It I is mean, real. Let's just be clear. You start, I said, okay, I'm just going to do two, ch two chickens. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up with 20. Wow. And God rest his soul, I lost three of my girls, but... I'm gonna replace them. <laughs> See, that's chicken math. Exactly. You lose three. You buy how many you buy when you lose three? Five. Five to ten. Yeah. Is that easy? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> easy. easy. That's you become a chickenologist after mm -hmm. that, right? Right, right. <laughs> but what I love too is is how you share what you learn and you share your, your production. I love the way that you've opened up, you know, your world to other people and inspired them. Like you inspired me when I watch uh, videos and things like that. Like, I'm like, I want a garden. I'm about to grow me some, you know what I mean? Um, but, but it's, it's really, really dope though. Tell me about those first two chickens. When you first get into this, what made you get those, those chickens? Like what made you get into this? Well, I, I had did my research, you know, you go to YouTube mm -hmm. and start Googling and I, I wanted to see where they're low maintenance, but I wanted, it was all about the food for me, the mm -hmm. eggs. Um, I remember visiting my sister, she lives in Boston mm -hmm. and they always had fresh eggs they prepared for okay. us when we visited. And I'm like, this taste is different. Okay. It's, it's, and, and I wanted that same taste. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did again my research and when I said, you know what, let me just get two chickens and try it myself. And when I tell you, I would never, ever <laughs> buy eggs out of a grocery store ever again. Ever again. Not on my watch. Right. Man, I did a comparison with eggs yeah. and I cracked one of mine and one of theirs. And I was like, this is supposed to be fresh pasture raised eggs. And it is not. I can look at it and tell. Yes, absolutely. And <clears> it's like I, if I, when I taste somebody else's. When you go to restaurants and mm -hmm. things like that, you don't even want it. At all. Nope. Absolutely not. Nope, nope. And then you can tell if it's powder eggs, too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, no. And then we got the bougie. I call my girls. They so bougie. Because mm -hmm. we do the color. We, know we got the Easter eggs yeah. and all the Oh, isn't it gorgeous? Man, colors. come on. That'll get you in trouble, too. Listen, that's all I want now. You want color eggs. Rainbow eggs. Right. Nothing else. Tell me about it. So, what do you have right now at, at, at your at your flock? What does it consist of? We have black copper morans. Mm. We got red comets. We got America uh, Americanas, lavender Americanas. Mm -hmm. We got Easter eggers. I'm hearing blues, greens, yes. coppers. 
brown. Yes, and now I'm looking at your flock. I said, wait a minute now. <laughs> you got this, this beautiful silky. I'm looking at that. It's, it's addictive. It is. It really is. It is, especially if you have some income to go along with the addiction. Oh, geez. Yes, and now <laughs> we sell our eggs at the farmer's market. That's amazing. We sell out. Mm. And so those color eggs are hot commodity, honey. Those are bougie. They eggs, are. So, so, so it, are you team wash or team counter? Which team are you? What are I'm you doing? Everything back to the basics. Mm. We're a team counter. Okay. Absolutely. And we're taking it literally back to the basics. That's the whole purpose of us doing the gardening. Mm. That's the whole purpose of doing the farm. Farming is to take it back to what it was because our grandmother and them didn't put them in the calvinators that right. they called it right. back then. And so, what are you, team wash the team? I'm team counter. See, so if anybody I, that gets eggs from me, if they want them clean, I wash them and I say, hey, we 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 wash them now. You have to refrigerate them, but we rather them come straight out the little chicken butt nugget, and then we just gonna give them to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Right. Do you know a lot of my friends where I try to gift my eggs don't want them because they said they're too fresh? I don't understand that exactly. either. I've got literally somebody told me. That last week I said, listen, I'm, I'm gonna say, hey, Miss Hines, we love you. She said, I don't want fresh chicken eggs. I don't want that. And I said, just taste the egg. And she was like, well, they just gonna have to mix them in with another one of my eggs. So I, <laughs> I don't know. She came back. She was like, Reese, them eggs was delicious. Fire. I'm trying to tell you, you got to. No such thing as too fresh. Absolutely. Right. You know what's going into their bodies, mm -hmm. and then therefore you know what's going into yours. Mm. And so we're going to do this thing. We're going to start from the root to the sewer. Like, we're going to do it. Right, right. <laughs> so what made you want to get into, the like, the farmer's markets and stuff like that? You just had way too many? Yeah, we were. We were the, my ex, again, <clears throat> my eggs were produced. My chickens were producing eggs throughout the season. Even <clears throat> when it's supposed to be the molt season, right. we were just getting too many eggs. And you can't give us so many away. People mm -hmm. like, oh, now you don't want no more. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was a farmer's market. The owner of it asked me what I'd be considering putting my eggs in her market. And I said, I sure will, Susie. And now we can't keep them. We can't keep them. That's amazing. I'm gonna hit that. I'm not supposed to use a hype bell for this show, but we're gonna use it. We're gonna hit it. <laughs> we gotta do it with our in studio guests. Man, that's amazing. Yes. And y'all are just selling out. Which Absolutely. farmers market is it? Because we have people that listen locally. So which farmers market? It's table sweets. Uh it's farmers market. It's uh the sweet shop on okay. Highway Five. Highway Five, the yes, sweet it's shop. Beautiful black and white building. You can't miss it. They support local farmers okay. as well. And so you'll get fresh produce fresh eggs everything fresh in that market nice nice i'm thinking about not this next spring i think i'm gonna breed and milk my goats so i'll be looking for a Listen, home for that you too. are such an inspiration i in my family back home and my father's from trinidad so <clears throat> okay. i understand the basics of learning how to you know to have them goats mm -hmm. and to see you do that first of all how did you start doing that like what was that about that was chicken math so I was like, OK, so I had the two chickens, yeah. same started with two golden comets, yeah. like my Blanche and Rose. Right. And from there, it just started. I grew the interest, grew, everything grew out, end up with all these chickens. And I got goats. So I was like, you know, the next chicken math step is goats. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, I want some goats. We found some baby goats. And this is all in line to what I wanted to enter. And we wanted to introduce kids to this. So I was like, what's the most adorable thing you can do is probably a baby goat. Yeah. yeah. So we got some Nigerian pygmy goats. The kids love them every time we bring them to the schools because, you know, chickens are like that gateway animal. Absolutely. And if kids can be happy about chickens and goats and then maybe they'll start growing some plants like you doing. <laughs> So that's and what I happened. told my husband, I said, please look at how, look at what Reese is doing. We want goats so bad. And my, it's ironic. My ex, my daughter's father has mm -hmm. over, I think it's about 60 goats. Wow. They breed them in North Carolina. Uh -huh. That's a real big high commodity. Mm -hmm. So I, my husband's been watching your page. So hopefully fingers crossed. <laughs> there we crossed, go. Go on, get some go on and get her. We talking to you right now. Go on and get her some goats. She, she really just needs some goats. You know, they, I, why not? See? You know, you'll be the goat if you get her some goat. See? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but it, I mean, and, and I've learned a lot about them. So any, you know, any knowledge, you know, yeah. I got you because I know I learned from y'all, too. So and that's what I was going to say. You always sharing your experience. And that's one thing I love about it. When we're in this in this you know, space of our life. Mm -hmm. It's about teaching and educating others mm -hmm. so that they don't feel overwhelmed or uneducated or, you know, don't know how mm -hmm. we give them the, we give them the recipe, the blueprint, yes. and they don't make some of the same mistakes that we made, you mm -hmm. know, when we first started the journey. Right. And I love when you come on, when I see you walking out of that garden toward the camera, Oh, I say it's on and popping again. <laughs> 
tell me about how social media has been for you because you you guys come from a different space, like a different world is almost sports and entertainment yeah. can be sometimes a toxic environment online. But yeah. this space I've learned is is a lot different for the most part. Yes. Tell me about that. It's so much gratifying. You know, Eric and I, we live downtown where mm-hmm. my daughter were empty nesters. Mm-hmm. And so we lived downtown and we did the downtown thing, but we were distressed. Like our health, mm-hmm. high blood pressure, hypertension, high cholesterol. Uh-huh. Mentally, we were just in a space of I just didn't feel my best self. So Eric found this place. Uh, we live in Douglasville. And he found this piece of land. And I said, you know what? We're going to be intentional on what we do on this land. Mm -hmm. And so we started just a small garden. It was just, you know, again, just to feed my family. But again, I felt like a responsibility. If we're going to do it, let's share it with our people. Mm. And so that one garden turned to four. Wow! And now we have a community garden where we host these workshops so that we can show people like you don't have to have you don't have to have a bunch of, you know, acreage Mm -hmm. in order to do this thing. You could do it from a patio, a condo, a townhome. Mm -hmm. But we just want to show them the basic fundamentals of just you know, changing the trajectory about you can grow your own food Yes, Mm -hmm. without being intimidated about, you know, what people say online. But this platform has allowed us to scale and to now, you know, we, you know, we popping on social media. No, y'all are (laughs) popping, popping. Like it's not even a game out here. (laughs) But I love it. And now it's just opening up opportunities for us to reach others in their homes, Mm -hmm. no matter where they stay. So, yeah, it's a dope. It's a dope journey, man. It, it is really. And I man, like I said, we are fans. We appreciate what you guys share. Like, I love your energy when you come popping out that garden. You like this or that and the third. And you guys do the workshops. And tell me when you first started the garden, um, what were some of the things that you first grew and some of the things that you're growing now? Well, one of my mentors told me that if you're going to grow something, grow the things that you love to eat, mm-hmm. because, uh, again, what are you doing it? Vegetables are getting super expensive. Soil is expensive. Everything is now expensive. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to just, again, grow the food that my family ate. And my husband is a meatitarian. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's super country. He don't eat a whole lot of vegetables, but I wanted, I was like, is it because of how it tastes in the store? Mm -hmm. But now his palate has grown. Mm. He eats everything that we grow. So it's, you know, it's collard greens, it's cabbage, Mm -hmm. it's kale, it's spinach, it's peppers, Mm. corn, all of it, you name it. We grow it. And one thing about me is I'll try anything one time. <laughs> I like so that. We are growing okras and eggplants mm-hmm. and um, loofah. Mm. I just did a video about people don't understand that loofah starts off as a as a vegetable. Wait, hold on. The, why, I'm going to wash my body loofah? Yes, the wash your okay. body thing grows. It's a gourd family. Mm. And so it grows like a vegetable and it tastes like a cucumber. Mm. So, uh, okay. And that's interesting. And as I'm learning that. I'm sharing. And so now people's like, I did not know that Lufa grow on a vine. It's like, yeah. You're going to have folks eating they, uh, they body wash stuff. Listen, you know, <laughs> <laughs> don't eat that. Okay? Don't eat, eat that. What you grow. Girl, eat what you grow. <laughs> that is amazing and inspiring yeah. when you talk about you named all the stuff I like. You know what I mean? So I'm like, man, I'm about to get into this for real. So, man, yes. th- this was a selfish interview. I'm not going to lie. I was like, I, I want to talk to her because I want to I want to start growing some stuff. And you know, it's the thing about it in these workshops, people leave activated. <clears throat> they mm-hmm. are very inspired to, I let them leave with beans. You mm-hmm. know, everybody eats, you know, some sort of bean. Mm-hmm. And so when they take those beans home and they start to sprout, they get excited. Yeah, you see that. now they start tapping in like out. They feel like they could, could do anything. Mm-hmm. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to spark that thing that was inside of them to say, you know what let me at least shoot my shot Mm. and again that just uh, you know sharing is you know caring and so that's what we're doing there we go tell me about are there any specific because i don't know a whole lot about growing so some of the things in my ads are ignorant are there anything specific about like fertilizers that you use or something like that yes definitely i'm all organic just Mm -hmm. like i feed my my chickens everything what they eat i eat right i want to talk to you about that food too so but let's talk about this fertilizer real quick so fertilizer has to all be organic Mm -hmm. um OMRI is like when you it's certified organic. And okay. I tell people when you're buying those type of fertilizers to look for that stamp mm-hmm. um, again, because what if you do if you're not doing it organically, you might as well buy it from the supermarket. Mm-hmm. And I want it to change that trajectory. I want it, everything to be healthy for us. But we build our own soil. A lot of people in Georgia, you know, we got that red clay. Right, right. It is very hard to grow in red clay. Mm-hmm. But we take the manure from our chickens, mm-hmm. put it in a compost. You can use manure from cows. Mm-hmm. You could use mushroom compost. All those things that are, you know, they can break down, biodegradable. You could put that into your body. Mm-hmm. And so we're 
are very, very careful that we only do natural ingredients. I like that. I like that. So now I'm learning a little bit about fertilizer because I got these horses now and they leave a lot of it. So I said it's high in, in, in uh, is it with a nitrate. Yes. So I have to let it sit for a long time, but I'm I'm piling it up. So. Yes, let it sit in that compost. <clears throat> As it breaks down, the more nutrients is mm-hmm. in it. I even tell people who love to shop in the Amazon boxes, mm-hmm. we use those that box, which is, is uh, you know, come from a tree. Right. It breaks down and it makes for great compost. OK, good so to nothing know. Nothing goes wasted in our house from your scraps mm-hmm. to if you're juicing, you keep all that pulp from the juices, mm-hmm. break that down and that goes into the soil mm-hmm. and it goes back into the body and gives you every bit of nutrients that you need. Right. I'm not going to forget to get to this feed because I want to talk about it. Let's talk about this compost a little bit. How big is y'all's compost space? What else are we are going into? Because I'm hearing what you're saying. I got like about five notes right now, but tell me about that <laughs> composting too. Yeah, so we have about three compost bins. Mm-hmm. And again, nothing goes wasted. We use from the chicken manure, from house scraps, mm-hmm. to pulp from your juices, and even vegetables that die for the season. Like now mm-hmm. we're embarking on the fall season. So all the vegetables vegetables that are now dying from the spring and the summer, Mm -hmm. you save all those uh, shavings and you keep that into the compost and it breaks down to make for a very rich soil. Mm -hmm. And that's what we use because again, soil is getting super expensive. If you ever know, there's an uptick of people starting to grow their own food. Mm -hmm. So supply and demand right now, the vegetables and the plugs at those local uh, commercial places are getting expensive. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to find ways to save on costs and again, be very critical about again what we're what it is. Yeah. Yes, what yeah. goes into that compost. Okay, pretty good. So, yeah. very good stuff. So I got because we had the rabbits, we got goats, we got uh, the horses. So I'm just I got poop galore over there. And listen, even with those goats, there is a <clears throat> business out there. There are people who have access to land, and mm-hmm. they don't want to go in and cut that down. There's mm-hmm. a company that would bring goats in for five days, yeah, and they will clean that property line off for you. Yeah, and I'm like, who knew? That's a new thing. That's how I was introduced to goats. That's what? that was my my basically my um introduction to getting kicked out of a HOA. So we had kudzu growing all on the back, and I was like, I got these chickens. I don't want to spray anything back here, and if I cut it, it's coming right back. Mm-hmm. So I was like doing some research, and I was like, well, goats will eat it. And I looked at my HOA, and I can't own goats, right? Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what? What if I could rent some goats? I go on Google. I'm like goat rental. About ten companies popped up. I said, "This is crazy." It's a market for everything. It is, and everything serves a purpose. And I believe, like even when I think about when we're gardening, uh, mm-hmm. you know, every the, the, what we put into our body, I want to make sure it has a beneficial reason mm-hmm. for it. You know what I mean? Yes. And so even with chickens, you know, we got the fresh eggs. Mm-hmm. You got goats. What what their purpose? So be intentional with anything that you do, mm-hmm. whatever season of in your life. And uh, it's just, it's again, it's just phenomenal. And it's going to get back to you. Yeah, it's going to sure. get back to you. So, yep, that's how I was introduced to him. The lady came. She was so funny. She was like, hey, they're going to eat up everything back here. And then you'll know when they get done because they're going to start getting in trouble. Right. And Do I was like, yep. jump everywhere like I see. Them. Yes. So the ones that I rented. Yeah. So they were eating up everything back there. And then about three days later. I just hear the chickens going crazy. Mm-hmm. I come outside. One goat has broken into the coop at the time. He's on top of the chicken coop inside of the run. Right. Another one was on top of my my uh, my my patio furniture. One was ramming into the dog kennel. And I was like, oh, they're finished. They are bored out of their mind and they find this stuff to do. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I really loved it, though. I wanted to get some goats. And I was like, man, I can't wait. So I finally was able to move and get my goats. Wow. Mm-hmm. How gratifying is that when you said you, you did it for the children, mm-hmm. like for them to come? It's like coming into us. They're able to pet it. Yes, they're up, able to pet it. it. They're able to give them treats. And then yeah. we talk about what our goats really for. Yeah. And then we talk about it like that. But man, the first event we did when we brought the goats to the school, the way those kids lit up and they were like, oh, my God, what is that? One little kid was like, is that a cow? And I was like, we'll tell you all about it. So it was just amazing. So that was yeah. it is gratifying. Mm-hmm. It is. And I've noticed that a lot of people who attend those my garden workshops Mm -hmm. are now wanting to bring their family and their Mm -hmm. children and how they learning about the literally it's the basics again Mm -hmm. getting back to the roots of it it's like creating something bigger than yourself putting that seed of wisdom and knowledge into them and you pray that they remember that example or how that feeling how it made them feel and they share that with their children Mm -hmm. their children's children so it's a part of the legacy for me too it is it is and and the way you're saying it's like it's that gift that keeps giving um and we talked a little bit about that red clay here in georgia under my coop 
And after the first year, I'm in there just cleaning up. And I'm like, this clay is not red anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like soil. It's like mm-hmm. dirt and soil. And there's yeah. worms up under there, a couple of bugs. I'm like, man, they have changed the environment out here just being yeah. themselves. Do you? I, I'm using um, inside of my chicken coop. I'm using um, sand, river sand. Okay. Have you tried that? I haven't tried sand yet, but that's the next step. What I do, I, I have a little sand. I, they have a bathtub, right? Mm-hmm. So I have a sand corner. Okay. So they have sand, and then in the winter when we're, uh, uh, I use my chimney, mm-hmm. and my, you know, the fireplace. I take the ash and I put it in there too, because they like bathing in the ash. Really? Mm-hmm. They love I it. Have not tried that yet. Yeah, they love bathing in the ash or the sand, right? Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the coop, we use uh, hemp bedding. Okay. So we use hemp bedding or we use fine pine, whatever is readily available. Shout out to Eaton Pet and Pasture. Hemp bedding. Right. So they always make sure we got good hemp bedding. But that hemp bedding is super absorbent. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's easy to clean out the nesting boxes because I use a cat scooper. That's how if, with the mm. river sand, it's it reminds me of of kitty litter. Kitty litter, yeah. And I wanted something because uh, now it's like that chore used to be my chore. Now mm. it's my husband's chore. <laughs> it's like now he, those his chickens instead of mine because they mind him more than they mind me. <laughs> it's, they're so super submissive to him. Mm. They put their wings yeah, out. Yeah, so as you walk over there, yeah, they're like this, and I'm like, what? They don't do that for me. You know why though? They think he's a rooster. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's what he's saying. It's like they love him to death. And they have their own per- quirky personalities. Mm-hmm. I named all my girls. Mm-hmm. And it's, he's like, how do you know their names? Like, you can tell by their personality. Mm-hmm. Those black copper Morans are so, it's like his sister's is Laverne and mm-hmm. Shirley. Don't laugh at my name. No, nah, I love it. I got Laverne and Shirley, Thelma and Louise, mm-hmm. uh, Sunshine. Is, I, the list goes on. <laughs> I love these And names. I got the, the Golden Girls. Mm-hmm. Those are the older ones right. that are such bullies. Do you, do <laughs> yes, you have- my, 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 I have Loretta, Blanche, and Rose, my Golden Girls. Yeah. They all three Golden Comets, all yep. three Rescue Chickens. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Oh my yep. goodness. And they are they are the bullies. Yes. Cause they like no nonsense. None. <laughs> they but they're so sweet to people. Yeah. My, my goal in the comments are super sweet to people. Yeah. But they with other chickens, they don't play the radio. You know, I had to buy those. Um my all my girls well, the ones that get picked on, mm-hmm. I had to buy the little t- little covers to protect them yeah. from getting pecked mm-hmm. on. But what happens every time we bring new chickens into the flock. Oh yeah, that pecking order change. <sighs> doesn't it? Mm. And so we have three chicken coops. Okay, that I mean that's house. a great practice. Practice. And so it's like they go into the halfway house mm-hmm. and stay there mm-hmm. until they're able to, you know, go and fend for themselves. Mm-hmm. It's a whole, it's a whole operation over there. I, I love they it. They got to start paying rent, which is eggs. It's eggs. <laughs> they better, they got to produce. They got to pay. They got to pay. Pay where you stay. Pay where you lay. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. I like that. Um, I, I actually learned something um, another day. I was talking to Doctor Biggs, um, and he was saying that. Uh, having multiple coops is actually not just good for introduction, but, or if you're breeding certain breeds, Mm -hmm. but it's also great if you have different life cycle chickens. Mm. So if you have your older chickens, he was like, you can actually move them to one coop as they're not laying as much because they, they, their diet needs maybe need to change differently because they don't need the the added calcium or they may not need oyster shells or whatever you add into it. You know what I mean? So he was like, it's a really cool idea to have those multiple coops. You know what? I did not think about that because mm-hmm. now we are we have the golden girls, which are the older ones mm-hmm. that are not laying as much. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of hard on who's not giving me eggs without putting cameras in. There. Right. But I'm like, Ooh, what get do you, you some do? cameras. Get you some cameras. I know. That's the funnest thing in the world. I got a duck cam. I'm going to show you off camera right really? now. I go. I'll I be spying on my ducks. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when we, we had a predator come and, and, and take two of my girls mm. and we had the camera, but then we just didn't, you know, follow through mm-hmm. with that. But I really wanted to know, how do you find out what when your girls are not laying anymore? Like, do you mm-hmm. have to isolate them from the rest of the flock? Like, what do you do? Yeah, well, the cameras do help with okay. that, too, if, if you because you know your chicken. So, you know, who is of what age and what breed and you kind of go from there. So we know our golden comma is going to super lay between one and three years old at three is going to taper down and every chick is different just like people yeah. right it may taper down so now you're looking at okay i'm gonna look at egg color based on what i have mm-hmm. and if my let's say my copper marines if those those color eggs aren't showing up like mm-hmm. that every day oh i know she's slowing down okay. if those comet if those light brown and tan eggs aren't showing up every day okay they're slowing down maybe i can move them around right mm-hmm. gotcha it's yeah. like my blue egg, Meg Thee Stallion. That's what yeah, I, I like it. I <laughs> like it. She's my American uh, Americana. She mm-hmm. is amazing. She's pumping out those eggs, mm-hmm. but she's also on the lower of the of the pole of mm-hmm. the uh, pecking order. Yeah. So they tan that baby up. Oh man. So yeah, you might have to move it around. Sometimes yeah. it's just moving it around a little moving them around. Moving them yeah, around. moving around coops or something like that. I had to do that too. Like uh, we got we got. 
I got two black Morans, black cop Morans mm-hmm. right now. Uh, they're pullets. And I got an Easter egg and I got a mystery chicken from, from Dragon mystery. Supply. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what that baby is. Right. It's a chicken. Right. right. But what we did was because we got that big nine by 20 run. Mm-hmm. I got a dog kennel in the run. Okay. So they're inside this dog kennel before I introduced them. They had been in there for like as soon as they feathered out, probably a week later, I put them in there. They had, mm-hmm. they were in there for like a month straight, mm-hmm. just interacting with the big girls. Right. So now when the, the day I let them out to interact with the whole flock, I mean, that pecking order thing, it went like that. It wasn't even it wasn't much of anything. Wow. Mm hmm. I, I think about that because, again, I want to get more chickens. Mm-hmm. Don't tell my husband. Well, I, can't, I guess he knows now, right? <laughs> he knows we now. got chickens in protect. We got chicken order out there. I have this disconnect that raises the chickens for me because I don't mm-hmm. have, it's about the time management yeah. for me to manage mm-hmm. the gardens and all of what we have going on. Yeah, you got a lot going yes, on. Yes, it's production. And so, uh, shout out to Pasture Farms. I love them. Mm-hmm. They raised my chickens up until about nine weeks. Cool. They, they brew them, them up for you. I love them. Yes. Yeah. And so, they come to me. And we just do that whole, put them in the transition house mm-hmm. and then we introduce them. But it definitely saves time. And so when people, what advice, because I get this question all the time mm-hmm. because you've raised so many, when they, it does, is it time consuming raising them from the chick? Yes. Uh, like to, you know, be able to migrate with the rest of the flock? Yes and no. I will say that. Yes and no. Um, if you're going out there to feed your chickens every day anyway. Yeah. Uh, brooding is not that it's not that much different at all. And I'm mean, like, everybody's journey is different. Mine has been this. Like <clears throat> I went from I got this big tub from Tractor Supply, like the big water trough, the metal one. I got a, a grate to go over the top of it. And I got a heat, a heat box. Not I don't like lamps anymore. So mm-hmm. I got my little heating pad and then the, the food and the water. Trick is with the food and the water is put it up so they don't get stuff in it every day. Okay. And if you got enough water to last them like a couple of days at a time, that's cool. As long as it's sitting up a little bit because they, they can figure it out. Mm-hmm. I put rocks around it in the water Okay. because the baby chicks, they could drown. So we really? put pebbles in it. Okay. So if they get stuck in there, they can get back out. Okay. And then the food... We just have, you know, a good food in there and they, they do pretty well. So like every day I check it, mm-hmm. I just want to see them. You know, that's <laughs> part, the part of my therapy. Yes. Every day I want to check it. Um, But then also it, it's pretty cool because I don't have to do something with it every day. Yeah. I just got to kind of watch them. So if they all huddle together, I know I, I know I need more heat. If mm-hmm. they kind of chilling, they, OK, they good. And then you just check them every couple of days. Make sure they don't have poopy butt. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. I always thought about that. And my husband and I, because we empty nests, mm-hmm. we travel. And then it's like, yeah. who's going to watch your chickens mm-hmm. when you're gone? Let's talk about that, Listen. too. Listen. So we, we, we were, we're purchasing a property in Mexico. Mm-hmm. And so we go for like 30 days at a time. Mm-hmm. And my daughter, I was like, hey, can you be on chicken duty? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking I'm coming back. You know, she's like, oh, they're producing eggs. Mm-hmm. She hadn't cleaned the coop mm-hmm. in 30 days. <laughs> Did she at least get the eggs was, out? She got the eggs. Okay. <laughs> but I had mounds and mounds and mounds of poop. Yeah. How do you take that? How and now I feel like I can't go, but so yes. you know, so long without mm-hmm. checking on my girls. Do you have a chicken keeper? Like a, a no, I, I don't feel bad now. Like I, I I had the same situation. My daughter, I'm like, I was gone for like a week. Mm-hmm. On you know work travel and I'm like can you do this can you do that I got a whole list I got a text but I'll show you the whole text but I'm like you got to do this with this and right. I I feel a little bad because you know I got ghosts I got rabbits I got this I got that but they say they like animals man I came back to the the, <laughs> the coop was upside down I'm gonna tell you that <laughs> and I'm like what are you doing you see me do it every day very animal right. So we got to I think we need to start a company about like farmers keepers or something like that. Exactly, Because we do this with our pets, like Mm -hmm. our dogs anyway. But I always think about my babies when we're gone and we do have the automatic door. Mm -hmm. We got that too. Yeah. Saving grace. Like we sitting up there, everything. And and so I felt good about that opening up. But it's the other part of it. Mm -hmm. And one chicken died while we were away. Same with me. One of mine died while I was away. My daughter was just like she was distraught. Like Mm -hmm. what I'm going to tell mom and dad Mm -hmm. that she. Can die. I'm like, what? Well, we still don't know the cause of it. Right. But again, it's just, I guess that comes with the territory. Yeah, it's part of chicken it. Chicken sitters. Yeah. That's a whole new Chicken sitters. It is because we got so many people now with farms and stuff like that. They love these. These are pets, not just 
producers. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. So so I went on uh, care.com. I went on the dog thing and I, I thought I hired somebody. They didn't show up. So then I ended up having to call one of my family members wow. to come and they, they did end up. Luckily, they did end up come. So, so I feel that like maybe, a, you know, I'm entrepreneur. <clears throat> right. So I feel like you may need to, you know, create the change we want to see. Man, I'm trying to tell you like, yeah. and I think because especially here is local school. So yeah. it's just people that need some of those hours and they probably want to make some money too. Listen. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Y'all get ready. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we man in these coops. <laughs> right. It's serious business. It is it's an investment. Mm-hmm. And I'm in it for the long haul. That's mm-hmm. why I feel that, yeah. you know, when children come visit, you know, not only for the eggs for my family, but mm-hmm. it's the extension of. And um, it's wonderful to see so many people are getting into this market. Yes. And not just doing it for the, you know, for the for cloud or whatever you want right. to say. Oh, I just got chickens. Mm-hmm. No, the benefits that come with it, how it helps with our mental health. Yes. And how eating the, the eggs are pure and are great for our bodies. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a mind, body, and soul experience when you get chickens. It really is. And one of the misnomers of people are, oh, you eat eggs all the time, huh? Your cholesterol is probably high. It's not that type of cholesterol in the eggs. That's a myth. That We've looked it up it. and debunked it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I told Eric, I said, now that we are doing it, we are super healthy. I'm this close to be like this close to being vegan. Mm, this close. Okay. I only I love to gr- only eat what I grow. And I told Eric, okay. let's go on a 30 day challenge to only eat what we grow. Mm. And so he was like, well, we need to start doing meat birds in. <laughs> he's like, you, you got to meet me halfway. Exactly. I, I feel you on that one. Yes, he's definitely a vegetarian. So we are considering doing meat birds. Cool. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the meat birds. We're going to talk about that in a second. Let's talk about this feed. I got to get to it because you make your own feed. Yes. And I, and let me tell you something. It is, it's very time consuming. I'm okay. not going to lie. But the benefits are better. Um, and again, I'm just very conscious about what we put in my body. Mm-hmm. I am a cancer survivor a yes. few times. Mm-hmm. And I remember my oncologist telling me about, you know, being very cognizant about what I go goes mm-hmm. to my body. And so if I take that same method to my chickens, mm-hmm. very cognizant about what goes into their bodies. And I know people say, oh, there's no such thing as, a, you know, you having an organic egg mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be. Listen, you do or do what's best for you and right. I do what's best for me. Right, life. right. But how have you tried, you know, feeding your, making your own chicken feed? No, I haven't. I, I'm a, I haven't done that because I, I don't have the time, I don't think, and I haven't grown anything yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. So right now I'm a checkerboard man. I'm Purina. Like I've I've seen, I've tasted my eggs. They taste delicious. Yeah. I've seen, I haven't really lost a bird to anything other than natural causes or, you know, a stray dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go with what I know, right. but I'm not opposed to that. Like I see how, how happy and healthy your birds look. You know what I mean? I see how happy and healthy y'all look on yeah. online. I'm like, that's this is another move to do. Right. You know it's, what I mean? It's the receipts, and I tell yeah. you what works for you. Know everybody does what mm-hmm. works for them. Turner Turner uh, Meals is another company mm. that makes great feed. My yeah. girls are so bougie; they don't even like the pellets. Mm. It's like everything got to be crumbled up. Yeah. Like, even when I take the vegetables off the stalk, like mm-hmm. I give them kale. They literally do, they want me to take the kale and off break it stalk. down. Oh, you got some. Oh, you they really got some bougie they ones. Bougie, baby. My Mine to take kale straight out my hand, like really? before I can hit the ground. Okay. Yeah, we, we we chopping up like a mixed salad mm-hmm. and giving it to him. Eric made a little chicknick table. Yeah, 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 that? yeah. I got one too. I got chicknick table too. So we had chicknicks yes, <laughs> all the major did. holidays. You know, but mine don't have no act right because she want to stand on the on table. the table. <laughs> I said, Where is that Rose? Rose always standing on the table, but I just it's. It's just an experience, mm-hmm. and I just I, I wish that w- when people watch us and they follow yes. our journeys, that they get inspired to do the same. So. Yeah, they have to. I mean, it's impossible to me. You just might just never want to do anything outside if you don't get inspired. Right. Yeah, because like I watch it, I'm like, I want to do that too. Yes. You know what I mean? So I, I love it. I love what you guys are doing. I got to hit the hype <laughs> bell again. You guys are amazing. Um, let's talk about some some more some wish list items. We kind of touched on it a little bit because you was like, I want some goats. Tell me about your wish list. If you just if 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 hubby said, you know what, just do whatever you want to do over here on this acre. What are you? What is your wish list? What are you doing? I'm inspired to do exactly what you're doing. Okay, getting more animals, <laughs> getting more animals, creating the like the farm, mm-hmm. the mini farm, the petting zoo type. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, is what we really would love to do. And we are in the process of acquiring more land okay. because I think we are maxed out mm-hmm. on our property right now. <laughs> we are using all acreage, every, every, piece. every parcel, absolutely. But to have uh, it more being of a petting zoo mm-hmm. and. 
experience so people come um it's not only gratifying for me but i want kids and older people i want mm-hmm. everybody to just come and feel a feeling mm-hmm. on how i feel when i go out at 7 a.m or 6 a.m mm-hmm. and be out there with nature and be with the animals it's the most gratifying experience me i'm not an early riser but since i've been doing this i have been right and it doesn't feel like i'm rising early it just feels like part of the situation yeah. i'm outside early in the morning it doesn't feel like work you know what it's i love it because it's quiet right mm-hmm. it's very quiet most people are asleep mm-hmm. but you know you notice like most the older people tend to wake up super early yes i'm turning into that person <laughs> but right. that's my that's my time of solace same yeah and so when you hear me doing the coming lives mm-hmm. from the garden yep. It's because I'm in that space, that mm-hmm. mind, that peace, and then the wisdom nuggets kind of drop in my head, mm-hmm. and then that's how I share. And again, that's a part of my mental health. It's, it's it does a lot to my mental health. Mm-hmm. So gardening and farming, it works hand in hand. It does. Mind, body, and spirit. It right. really does. So you're gonna have you're gonna have everything out there. I already know you're gonna this this beautiful black woman's gonna end up with llamas. I already know. I'm putting it out there. Alpacas at the minimum. Absolutely. I know it's coming, and they have great fertilizer. So there's her excuse. <laughs> They have Stay very too. good fertilizer. So what is, what's on your wish list? So my wish list is well, my dad has given me a wish list. So he wants full grown horse, like full size horses, uh, right? So I have to move first. Yeah, I'm gonna have to end up moving. I really, I, I got something that has nothing to do with farmer. I want a tortoise. Tortoises are vegan. They live a long time. They just be chilling. I want a tortoise. Um, I think I want more goats. Yeah, I definitely want to. I want to probably do a couple more big chicken coops, like okay. so a couple more big coops, and then I want turkeys. Okay. Yeah, I have ducks now. That's ducks are one of oh, those yeah, things. You got a lot. Oh, yeah, you definitely yeah. need a lot of land. Yeah, you need a lot of acreage. I, mm-hmm. I, I see that. And, you know, horses are amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, my, my some of my family has it, but they're super expensive. They are, they, they are. are. I have the half horses, and they are expensive. Are they? Yes, they, they're not crazy. The yeah. vet bill, the first time I was surprised at the cost of it in a good way. Yeah. Uh, the vet came out wonderful vet. If I could remember the name of the veterinary click, I would drop it right now, but they they come out. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Oh, the trip charge is only eighty five, and then we'll charge you everything on top of that." I was like, "That's amazing!" You know, wow. I think it ended up being like maybe three hundred for two horses. Do all the vaccinations, make sure everything was good. Mm-hmm. They got to come back out and float their teeth. I have a, a rescue horses, so they have different. You know, they have some some issues, mm-hmm. but nothing nothing bad. Just okay. some things we need to work through, right? Is that expensive though? Like to you think about it, it's still a bill <clears throat> at the end. Of it the is day. a bill, yeah, and it adds on to the other bills. <laughs> Because, you know, if if it ain't the horses, it's the goats. If it ain't the goats, it's the dogs. If not the dogs, it's the rabbits or the chickens. Something, right. everybody's going to have an issue. And it's usually not going to be at the same time. Wow. Right. And, you know, when we as we start adding, you know, more chickens mm-hmm. to, our, to our flock, it's like you think about the cost. But they kind of pay for itself. Yeah. Because we do sell our produce. We do sell our mm-hmm. eggs. And the, I told my husband, the more we get, you know, the more of a profit. Mm-hmm. And then, again, the more impact, I think that we will make because now people are wanting to come to see these colorful eggs mm-hmm. and because that's a whole market. It is. I noticed that when um, everybody was starting to, you know, talk about they wanting, you know, fresh eggs and then they saw, they didn't know that these eggs, these egg, uh, chickens make these color eggs, mm-hmm. they will pay top dollar mm. for those blue eggs, green eggs, copper, like blue, yeah. uh, the, the cho- chocolate eggs, mm-hmm. what we call them. People pay top dollar for that. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's wild that I love it because they may think it tastes different, but these eggs, if the chicken is eating the same, having the same life, basically, it don't matter what color it is, those yeah. eggs are going to taste, taste the, the same, taste, taste the, the same. same amount of delicious. Yeah, right. Because sure. I, I would be funny when people like, I don't like brown eggs. I'm like, well, that's the same as the other color. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's a different case. <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> I don't have white eggs yet. You have our white eggs. I don't have any. I have I have very close to white eggs. My uh, my uh, Samani's. They lay like yeah. a really uh, almost white or pink egg. pink egg. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, my somebody, which is the weirdest thing, it's all black chicken, but it lays a white, almost white egg. Oh wow. Yeah. That's so pretty. I see mm-hmm. your, the girls are pretty. Thank you so much. And my mother in law is talking about getting silkies, and so mm-hmm. I've been down this yeah. rabbit hole of looking for information. Mm-hmm. But uh, they are super. They're expensive. Yeah. They uh, yeah. they're they can get up there. Instagram, she wants it's three hundred and fifty dollars for one chicken. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. That's just me. I know hey no her. I mean, I, listen, there's some it's some amazing um like novelty breeds out yeah. there. Like my our friend, my friend, our friend of the show, Taylor up in Minnesota, he has bred a mix of I think it's a white 
leg horn and a samani. So you got all white chicken, all black chicken, yeah. and now he has a zombie chicken. What? It's an all white chicken with black eyes, a black beak, and a black comb Ooh, and waddles. I think that's a beautiful thing. It is. Like, it is. Something. I'm like, man, this thing is amazing. So I can see where, like, you taking the time to breed these things, yeah. trying to get the genetics right. Yes, you got a cost. Yeah. But me, I'm like, I'm, I myself won't pay that much for a chicken be- yeah. only because you never know what can get loose into your yard. Exactly. And I'm thinking about a chicken that beautiful. Silkies are absolutely like show, show right. chickens. Mm-hmm. I don't see how I could just let them go in that regular coop that's full of dirt. And right, you got, you got to. Be, they'll be filthy. Right, I gotta bring her in the house at this point. And yeah. you see people bring their chickens in the house. They do. Have you ever done that? I have. I've been guilty. I said I was not gonna be this guy, and I made a post about this. I said, I said I was never gonna be this person. And then I panned the cameras in my living room, and I had three brooders going at one time in my living room. I had ducks in one. And two with chickens in it going this this spring. And I was ashamed of myself. I was like, I got all these birds in my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I'm now starting to bring one of my ducks in the house. I got this big, massive duck. I don't know. They Nobody knows what kind of duck it is. I got it from the hatchery. Okay. I know what I ordered. Don't know what I got. <laughs> so we got 10 of them. He's He's been trying to tag along with me a little yeah. bit. So I'm trying to bond with him, like bond okay. with this one duck. Because the rest of them don't care about me at all. Do all your chickens let you pick them up, or they how is their temperament? So I so like you you've got Easter egg right? Yeah. Then the comments, the comments they will be ready for me to pick them up. Yeah. My wine dot wind dot. If I if I'm sitting down, she'll jump up on my shoulders. Mm. Um, and I don't know how she get that. She a big girl. Right. So that my my Orpingtons have all been cool with human interaction. Mm-hmm. Samani's no deal. They don't want no parts of me yeah. at all. They don't want to deal. Like if I get close, they going the other way. I got one I call Eagle, mm. and I you know we have to clip her wings. Oh yeah, she flies. She'll yeah. take off like mm-hmm. take flight. She's like a she looks like an eagle. Mm-hmm. Now she produces eggs like crazy, but she is the, you do not touch her. Mm. She'll take off like Jackie Jordan Kersey. <laughs> My husband she gets out the coop. She got and we got to chase her. It's a whole debacle. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, do you clip your wings or some of your birds? We had to when we were in the other neighborhood because they would jump on my fence, go in the neighbor's yard, tear their tomatoes up, and then come back like nothing happened. So I had to clip wings. I had to clip wings for like almost a year. Wow. But now I don't have to anymore. They yeah. they pretty cool. They do jump the fence. I'm like, y'all jumping out of safety. But then they'll come back. Right. So I'm like, you know what? I ain't even tripping. Getting them back in ain't the hard part. Mm-hmm. It's like once they get out, there's like, we free. Mm-hmm. They want to go exploring. And I'm like, okay now. Yeah, it's stuff out here we that you're not ready for. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. So yeah, what I see you guys clipping wings and all that is you have to. Yeah, yeah. sure. And we are, you know, they live in we live in such a wooded area. Mm-hmm. We have all coyotes mm-hmm. and all types of uh predators that could come. We had, you know, and predators are super smart. Yeah. Like I saw a video on TikTok where this raccoon was literally <laughs> lifting up like a, a mm-hmm. door thing. I'm like a fascia board or something. Yeah. I'm like, are you serious? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, they are so clever. If they really want to get in. Yeah, they're going to get in. Absolutely. They figure it out. What uh, what are you doing for predator prevention? Anything in particular? Oh, we got, we Fort Knox. And mm-hmm. My husband, he had built all our chicken coops. And they we have a chandelier mm. in one of our chicken coops. I saw that. Um, my girls was jealous. I ain't going to lie. They was like, <laughs> we don't have these types of nice things. <laughs> my husband, literally, he got the, heart, the, the, the very... Uh, the the fencing I can't think mm. of the name of it that hardware cloth absolutely yeah. we have that all around the perimeter mm-hmm. of the coop but I did notice we had a uh, some country mice mm-hmm. have you had issues with that we had the last before I moved we had a rodent problem yeah and they they figured it out. And then it was it was first it started with a couple mice and the rats fine figured it out and yeah. we had ones like this big in there. So we did natural traps. I did some natural traps. And then my guy, uh, Sean Truly Nolan, he came and he did some bait traps for me to around. And it, it kind of cut down most of it. Yeah. But that is a very tough problem to get rid of. Because yeah, once they get in. Yeah, it's, it's over and they'll come in. They'll keep coming back. Mm-hmm. What we had to do, because I am, I, I just knew for sure that I was not going to get you know mm-hmm. mice or rodents. I'm like, I keep my coops clean. Mm-hmm. But what we were doing, we were leaving the feed Ooh, in yep. there. And they're going to come and eat. They're gonna keep come back and mm-hmm. eat. And so uh, we start taking the food up. And then because we started using, like, we have big logs and mm-hmm. things. And so we started bringing all that up. So they don't go, you know, and hide Ooh, and yep. places mm-hmm. like that, places to go and, and breed. And so we started doing all of that. And now we are 
back to zero. There we go. But then there's feral cats that can be yeah. around. And mm-hmm. I'm normally not a cat person, mm-hmm. but now I welcome it. Yes. Because that's like a natural way to mm-hmm. come in and combat those my uh, country mice from coming back. So. Yeah. It's almost like give and take. Like, I, I, I don't trust snakes at all whatsoever. I if you don't have knees, I can't deal with you. You know what I mean? You got to have some ligaments. Yeah. But I know snakes keep down on the mice. So, like, I, I'll put, like, cayenne pepper around my pins. Yeah. Just to hopefully they don't go in the pin. But I don't mind if I see them around the yard or something. I'm just, yeah. like, we going to get. from get. Like, in the gardens, mm-hmm. the garden snakes, they're harmless. Mm-hmm. Um, I never thought that I would welcome that as well. See? But that's part mm-hmm. of the natural. If you're going to have that, you're going to have this, mm-hmm. you know. But we do ammonia. You mm-hmm. know, there's some things we do around the base of the garden. But everything else is you know natural but the snakes can be you know mm-hmm. they can be pretty um yeah 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 especially if you're not expecting to walk back there you going back there to get some cucumbers Listen. now you you know what i mean you got a bowl constrictor back here looking you in the face it's just <laughs> different you know i'm and not it's, a, it's golden corral at my house for these animals yeah like they come in and uh, we can't keep strawberries because mm. of the, you know the Little squirrels. Squirrels are kind of squirrels are nifty. Know, they. We got some thug squirrels because yeah. they just trying to they coming through fences mm-hmm. to get our goodies, and so we have to we got to keep we got to keep up <laughs> that too. That's what's up. What are some of the things and we kind of touching on now? Some of the things that are coming from nature you weren't expecting because like now I'm seeing all types of different bugs and spiders like I'd never seen before. Yeah. But I think it's because we welcome nature in. Now nature is coming to us. Yeah. So definitely, I said we have an uptick in squirrels for some strange mm-hmm. reason i don't know what's happening somebody told somebody mm-hmm. to tell somebody it was like the buffet open exactly <laughs> we have that we have family of deer that come mm-hmm. but spiders definitely because um you know we have different types of bugs mm-hmm. with different types of crops yeah but i'm gonna tell you something that i am welcoming we have so many zinnias zinnias are beautiful mm-hmm. flowers they welcome the butterflies so yes. when you come to my backyard it's like something off a disney movie mm-hmm. they're everywhere hummingbirds are everywhere mm. so when people come it looks super fake like right. it's like it's like you're set this up <laughs> it's right. the most beautiful thing you've ever seen and we welcome it though and so i personally when i plant anything it's with the intention to bring the bees because mm-hmm. we do have an uptick in bees yes. we need bees though but we need bees yeah mm-hmm. absolutely because now i want a bee farm mm. i should have put that you on want this. some honey there you go i mean I listen do. we here add to it why not <laughs> i know i know but i welcome it all and you would have never told me that i would be in this stage of my life mm-hmm. because i was a person that didn't like to go outdoors mm-hmm. i don't like worms but now i welcome worms yeah because that means my soul is not as good yeah. Yes. Right. I got mushrooms growing in my garden. Mm. That means my soil is good. Mm. So you got to let it do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. If you're going to do this journey. I love that. I, and we know what it's a couple of things you said. I'm going to circle back to you said uh, early on when you were living in the city. Health wasn't good. Mental health wasn't great. Wasn't in the be- best space of your life. You moved and you're talking about all of these things. And you, I could just feel the energy coming off of you. So that's like one of those things that happens. Absolutely. I tell anybody that's in my circle of life right now, you're mm-hmm. probably getting the best version of me mm-hmm. because of my mind, body and spirit being so free and clear, mm-hmm. getting back to the nature, to the basics of living in life, um, not living, you know, with the hustle and bustle. Cause mm-hmm. I know that was a season that I did, you know, in my life as well, mm-hmm. hustled and bustle, but I was, fortunate to retire at 40 mm. so this is my chapter two yeah and so i tell anybody if you have the opportunity and you don't have to do it on a large scale just start with something start with a small garden smart start with one chicken mm-hmm. you know i know chicken math is real mm-hmm. but i promise you do, you know nurturing your my, your mental space your body your spirit man i pro- you will make for a better person mm, i love that I, we can't end on a better note than that we're we gonna get up out of here off of that one tell all the few people that are following you where to get you at online and how to uh, support the garden and, and, and see when you guys are doing these seminars. Yes. So you can on social media, I'm Naya Brown Matthews. I try to make that consistent across all my platforms, <laughs> but you can also connect with soul food sessions with Naya.com. That's the way to connect. You can learn about our workshops. We host them twice a month. Um, and yeah, just come on and just come into the garden of mm-hmm. Eden and enjoy yourself. All right. When I see what she said, coming to the garden live, I just put on my seatbelt and get my popcorn ready. Cause this is definitely something you want to check out. We appreciate you coming through. Please tell your husband, we said hello and, and, and uh, your time is extremely valuable so thank you for being a part of this and sharing your story journey and information with our audience at excellent adventures thanks for tuning in to another episode of excellent adventures powered by blackyard chickens now if you think you want to raise your own backyard flock here's the site for you blackyardchickens.com 
We make entertaining videos about raising baby chicks from scratch. You know what I mean by from scratch, right? Or maybe you want to learn how to take care of your own big chickens or hens and get those fresh eggs. Building a coop or buying a coop, having the necessary things inside that coop to get great egg production. You'll learn a lot of the neat tricks I've picked up along the way from other chicken enthusiasts. And you can get pretty eggs just like those. So follow us on social media and check us out.